Morning everyone. So when I was having my cup of tea in bed this morning I was reading Psalm 115 and three verses in particular really got me thinking, verses 2 to 4. Let me read them to you. Why do the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. But their idols are silver and gold made by the hands of men. I guess it's easy when events are happening like they are for people who are not believers to say to those of us who do believe in God, where is your God? And perhaps when things seem so out of control we're tempted to ask the same question. But I was really struck by how quickly the writer of this psalm responds with what he knows to be true. Our God is in heaven. He does whatever pleases him. People who don't believe in God, while this world and what they can see is all that fills their field of view. So when things start falling apart, well, as far as they're concerned, they're on their own and that is the whole picture. But for those of us who are believers, we know there is a God in heaven and he is actively at work to do whatever pleases him. And it's that phrase that particularly encouraged me. God does whatever pleases him. Now, of course, when we use a phrase like that of other people, he or she does what she pleases, we obviously mean it negatively. We're thinking that there's a carelessness and a selfishness about their actions. But nothing could be further from the truth when it comes to God. For God to do whatever pleases him, is for God to do that which is good because what pleases God is that which is good. Everything he does is motivated by love and kindness and mercy and wisdom and all of them are working for our long-term good. And of course that doesn't rule out the possibility of short-term suffering if it is to achieve for us long-term security. And I guess that's where people so quickly lose the plot when they think about God's role in all of this and ask how he could allow this. We know that God takes the long-range view of things and he is working for our ultimate good. And one of the things he's doing at the moment is showing those who don't believe how fragile and fake the things are that they were putting their trust in. Their idols of silver and gold that we read about in verse 4. We know that there is a bigger picture. This world isn't all there is. So we can step back, open our eyes and see that there is a God who is in control. We need to remind each other that that is the case and where possible show other people that they're not on their own in this messed up world, that there is a God working out his good purposes behind the scenes. Why don't I lead us in a short prayer? Father God, thank you so much that you are in heaven and that you are in control. Thank you that you are working out what, that which pleases you and that that is for our long-term good. Please help us when our courage fails and our faith fails to remember who you are and what you're like 
uh, and that we can trust you to be working everything together for good. And we do ask, Lord, that you would use these events to bring many to faith who would not have otherwise um, spared a thought for you and your plans. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.